Welcome back everybody, Green Assassin here, and today I am bringing you episode 37 of my Direwolf 20s Let's Play series. This mod pack is available on the Feed the Beast launcher. Yeah, and yeah, last episode we did a little bit more setting up. Um, My outro type video said that. I was going to try and do this all in one video, but the explaining of the program took a lot longer than I thought. So I've split it up into two videos. Um, the other part of this video is already pre-recorded. Just figured I would record an intro for you guys. And yeah, so... Um, if you guys aren't really interested in watching... Well, it's going to be, it's not going to be me coding or setting up the Steve's factory. It's basically me just going through it and showing you guys how I set it up. I still have a minor problem with the dark steel and the fused glass. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, I do plan on doing it in the future. Just haven't had a chance yet. So, um, with that. I think I will cut it off here and let you guys enjoy the rest of the video. So I hope you guys enjoy. See you on the other side. Okay, guys, I am back after several, several hours of coding and bug fixing and testing. I think I think I finally got this thing working. I haven't tested all of the code yet, but you guys will see that I have changed a few things here. So, um, this Energestix connector thing kind of came in handy for me. Um, basically, all it's doing is pulling flint out of the AE system and putting it into my slag mills, and that's it that's all it's its only purpose so that was an expensive block to get that to do that so um i'm okay with that though like i said previously i've got lots of resources and i don't think that thing's overly expensive i think it's a bunch of redstone and um a few other things things let's see if we can find it here it's right here so yeah it's just a inventory cable two me interfaces that's kind of expensive two redstone blocks some peer and some peer or some peer certus quartz and peer fluix quartz crystals so and like i said that's a mod that i have added and i updated that's steve's add-ons and the main reason i had added that to begin with was for this thing here the manager duplicator um just so you can copy your programs so that if you want to move them you can type things so this is a nice new handy block i really like this i'll probably use this for another setup more than likely um move or added some chests to this um colored some cables probably didn't have to but i did anyways um these i have the spare cables and interfaces in here and as you guys can see i labeled these because I found that if I didn't label them and I went over, hold on, I want to grab this thing before we go back. Oh, I wasn't supposed to do that. I had like 100 FPS and then I start recording and I'm down to less than 30. But anyways, let's go over here and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So in this thing, this is the interface terminal. And when I didn't have them labeled, it was coming up as iron chest and it had 13 different um, interfaces applied to the iron chest section. So I made one from 
furnaces, I made one for alloys, and I made one for the slag. Well, I've got four interfaces for each one. I've only got two hooked up on this one and two hooked up on this one. I don't think there's many more alloys that I have to worry about at this point. But I have the room to expand if need be. So, And then to name your interfaces, what I did was I made these presses from Applied Energistics. And they're really easy to make. It's just the quartz cutting knife with an iron ingot. Oh, that's a blank one. Ah. Um, let's get the knife and I'll show you guys. So if you right click on this thing, it'll give you an interface and then you can put a piece of iron in here, write in the name that you want and it'll give you a nameplate. And then you take the nameplate, put it in the inscriber with whatever you want to name and it will name it. And you can do two nameplates. So if you want to make the name longer or something like that, you can. Um, put whatever you're naming in the middle of the inscriber and the plate on the top and the bottom of the inscriber and it will like press it together like it would press a processor together type thing so um, so yeah that was pretty nifty um, moved all pretty much everything except for my blood magic my Britannia my Thomcraft. Well, I moved everything AE related basically over to this side. So all my barrels are over here, stored down there. That's not their final resting place either. That was just to get the stuff over here. Um, moved my drives over here. The only thing I didn't move over here is the AE auto crafting stuff for the auto processors because. I don't want to lose that until I'm pretty much ready to set up another system for it. So I can still craft processors if I want. Oh, I can't spell. Still can't spell. So yeah, I can still craft these if need be. That's why I have that quantum bridge down there still hooked up. But I moved everything. Everything's running off of this main controller now. Which is a bonus, so... And it just made it easier doing this stuff. That's why I figured I'd bring it all over. Um, but anyways, let's take a look at the code. Like I said, I added two, two more chests to this system. Um, I thought I was going to have to take out my slag mills. but Because um, I have a coal recipe that goes in here for graphite. And then there's a coal recipe that goes in here for pulverized coal. So I thought I was going to have to remove those and that's why I ended up doing the three chest system because then that way I can have each chest set up to like that chest is for alloys, that one's for the slag mill and that one's for anything that needs to be done in the furnace. So that's when it sends stuff over to the system it's going to end up in whatever chest it needs for the setup processing which worked out pretty nicely actually. Um. The coding for some of it was pretty difficult. So the furnace and the slag mill is pretty straightforward, but the alloys I ran into problems. So we'll just take a quick look at the variables to show what kind of variables I have. So I have the furnace chest, alloy chest, slag mill chest, um, output interface, furnaces. That's all the furnaces on that side. Um, alloy smelters, all the furnaces on that side. Well, I guess they're alloy smelters, but whatever. Um, slag mills in the middle. So those are all set up as variables to make it a little bit easier in the programming. Um, and then if we go into furnace, I'm going to try and go over this as quick as I can, you guys. I don't have much time left on this episode. It's probably going to end up running long as is, so... Basically, what are we in? We're in furnaces. So basically, I have a trigger running to a for each, which is running to the furnace variable. And I had problems getting this to load balance, and then I figured out what I was doing wrong. So um, from the 
for each, it goes into the inventory variable for, well, it grabs out of the furnace chest. These are pretty much just left as default, like whatever it was set to, I left it at pretty much. So this is down. Um, and then I just got coal whitelisted, binder composite whitelisted. Um, sky stone and sandy glass and I took my glass recipe out of here because I plan on doing another cobble works I don't know if I should really call it that that's what Soren calls it but um, so what I found was when I was doing this I wasn't specifying the amount to one and I found that you need to specify it to one to get it to load balance across all the machines and yeah so that took me a little while to figure out and then the output is variable for the furnaces like i said left this as default and blacklist um this one is variable for furnaces again and left it as default down with the ender io machines it's pretty easy to set this up because you don't have to have certain sides selected just because of the way they've set theirs up so and then lastly the variable for the interface and then just whatever the default was which was up and an empty blacklist so that's the furnaces really easy to do that one just like i said make sure you specify one on whatever you're putting through there on your whitelist um so if we go back next would be slag mills this one was another really easy one um got a trigger running to a four each which is the sag mills um inputs variable the first input variable is the slag mill furnace Targeting the down, whitelisting whatever items that I'm going to be running through there. So coal for pulverized coal. Um, specified as the amount as one. Certus quartz for certus quartz dust. Fluix for fluix dust. Blaze for blaze rods. And quartz for nether quartz dust um next same thing as the last one pretty much just the variable changed sag mills targeting the up and the empty blacklist and then the input is same thing variable for the sag mills targeting the down like i said these were all set default so inputs like set to down for default and output is set to up for default for some reason empty blacklist and then the last one just runs it into the interface with a target of up which doesn't matter when it comes to that and then empty blacklist and then over here I have a trigger I'm going to show the trigger because it's just a default trigger this one is selected to this thingy here, the Energistics Connector. So that would be the AE system. Targeting the down, which left as default. And it is targeting flint and no special rules there. Just targeting flint and then it's pulling the flint out of the AE system targeting the sag mills and then I did set this one up to target the south side I don't think this will matter because there is no grinding reps recipe for flint so I'm pretty sure it would go into the right slot no matter what I just did that as a safety precaution because if we go stand on the front of the machine um this is on the south side of the machine and that's why i selected the south but i don't think it matters i think it'll default to the right position when you put it in there 
Um, and then items. Yeah, so we're done on that one. And that flint will just get it so that I get the extra little bit that comes out of the sag mill. Um, I might start auto press processing dark dark steel balls dark, no I want ender IO so these things here dark steel balls and they get you like a hundred and fifty percent main output two hundred percent bonus and a 30% power reduction. So I might switch that out and do that instead. But that's something for down the road type thing. So um, so that's the sag mills. So let's get in the complicated one. Um, got a lot going on here. So this one's just a basic trigger running to a four each, which hits the alloy furnaces or smelters and then I added a couple of recipes as I was going I can added the conductive um, conductive iron but I don't think I actually put a pattern in for this one yet no I didn't so there's that one just in case I want to add it I don't have to program it in after so these few are set up basically all the same it's the very last one that's going to be a little bit different so um so i got these all in their own separate groups um each one of these is a group and then what i have is a node running to a condition the condition is checking the variable for the alloy chest targeting down Searching for redstone and iron, and I specified the amount to one on both of those. And then the input, same as the condition, pretty much. Um, variable for the alloy chest. Um, looking for redstone. Oops specified amount one again same with the iron specified one oh no i didn't ha. so that one's specified now i haven't tested that one yet because like i said there's no pattern in there and then it just outputs it to the alloy furnace targeting whatever the default was empty blacklist and then I had put the input output to pull it back out of the furnace, but I couldn't get them to work. Um, I tried it with MVAR, MVAR, and what else did I try it with? I tried it with another metal, I think it was Electrum, and it wasn't pulling it out with this hooked up. So I came through, disconnected it them all, and this condition is if true. Like So if it's got this in that chest, it's going to run this line. And then if it's false, it's going to go to the node and move on to the next group. So, but because I have that one thing disabled in here, the output to get it out of the alloy smeltery, alloy, what are these things called? Alloy furnaces? No, alloy, alloy, alloy smelter. <laughs> sorry guys i am very tired it is very early in the morning for me um working on this pretty much throughout the night to get it done and try and get this episode ready um so instead of having that in the groups i ran another trigger here and then i just um ran a variable for the alloy furnace targeting default empty blacklist and then it outputs it to the variable output interface targeting default up and empty blacklist so that basically means if there's anything in this slot right here in any of these machines it's going to pull it out put it into the interface the interface is going to put it into 
um, the AE system, but I just thought I could have, instead of having that interface there, I could totally set it up for this thing, because I'm pretty sure that's how this thing would work. So I might try that out, and then I could move this down to there instead. Oh, sorry guys, I can't stop you on it now. So, pulsating iron, same thing. Node running to a condition. The condition is checking for iron and ender pearls specified amount. Um, inputting is the chest, same thing. Variable for the alloy chest. And then it's outputting it to the variable alloy furnaces. And then if that is false, that's if it's true. If it's false, it runs back into the node. Moves on to the next one, which is energetic alloy. Energetic alloy. And same thing, condition checks the chest. Like so, and then looks for redstone or glow, gold, redstone, and glowstone specified amount. All of these have specified amounts. Oh, I didn't disable this one's output. Um, and then yeah, same thing. Variable for the alloy furnaces, and this can get disconnected. And then true, it'll do it. If it's false, it will move on to the next one and then these are all the same just the different materials that are needed to craft it oops going and messing up my program already um variable for the chest energetic alloy and ender pearl which makes vibrant true it'll put it in Pull it, or yeah, put it in, and then if it's false, it will exit back out. So that is that. Fuse quartz, that one's just four quartz. Show off the items really quickly. Just four quartz, and then this one I specified amount as four, because that's what the recipe takes. So that should in turn put four into each alloy smelter. We can test it out right now. Um, fused craft me, let's say 12, 12 of those. Start, and if we're quick enough, We weren't quick enough. Oh. Okay, well, there's another bug. I hadn't tested the fused quartz yet. Maybe I might have to run that one on its own trigger, too. Um, that sucks. Why did it pull? Oh, because I wanted 12. I asked for 12. Watch my colics. So, let's do a little bit of testing on camera then, I guess. Let's remove this node. And we'll put a trigger in. Nope, didn't work. Okay, well, I'm going to have to do a little bit of testing with that one, I guess. Cancel. Let's try this one more time. Fused. We won't do as much this time. We'll do four. Start. Start. Okay, well, fuse quartz isn't quite working yet. Um, I will figure that one out off camera. 
I test. I didn't test them all. I only tested a few of them just to see if they were working or not. Oh, that's not what I want. Let's put this one here, and we'll leave it alone for right now. Um. So let's just kind of move that over there. So I know that one's broken. Dark steel I haven't tested, but it's one of those ones that should probably work. Inventories, variable, chest, items, looking for a piece of iron, pulverized coal, and obsidian. Specified amounts are one. So basically, I think what it is, is every one that has a specified amount of one will work all right. The ones that need more than one of the same item I'm having issues with. Um, what was that? Dark steel. Let's craft one, two of those. Start. Oh, you're going to make a liar on me too. Oh, you're going to make me run every one of these on their own individual trigger, aren't you? Well, where did the coal go? Oh, there's the coal. Okay, well, my system's very broken. Um... I think what I'm going to have to do is run everyone on its separate own trigger, which kind of really sucks, but at least it's all set up now where it'll be easy. I just got to trade the nodes out. Let's try this just quickly. Oh. Create a trigger. Um, go dark steel and go craft me one of those. Which one did it hit last time? That one? It's not there. Not there. Not there. Not there. Not there. It could be done already. Nope. Did I not ask you to craft me one of these? Next. Start. Craft. It says it's crafting. Uh, it's dumping it into the chest and not putting it in. So I don't know what's up with that, but, um... I do have a couple of them working, like I tested Envar out, and that one worked for me. Oh, this is really driving me. I was really hoping this was going to work now. So let's pull all our Envar out, and go crafting. We'll cancel you because you're not working. Pull you out, and pull you out. Put you back in here. We'll go in var, which this thing's probably going to make a liar out of me, because that's just how it works. Say craft one, start. Er, the whole system's broken again. Okay, well, let's show the one that I know works for sure. So we'll ignore this. I'm going to have to change this out and go through and do some more bug fixing. 
The bronze one was working for me earlier too, so I don't know what's going. Uh, did I put this one back to node? No, that one's running off a of node. It's probably the dark steel one that's messing me up then. Dark steel. Yeah, I put that one on a trigger. Um, did that kick it in? Oh, I put the ferris in my inventory. There we go. Pulled both of them out. I don't know where they went. Invar. We have three now. And I asked for one and the recipe makes you three of them. So that one works. Apparently dark steel and um, fuse quartz don't work. Okay, so this one goes over here, and then what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to hook this one to that one, and that can stay like that. It's a little bit messy, so I think the Electrum Invar and the Bronze works. I haven't tested these ones to see if they work. Let's try a Vibrant. Oh, this episode's going to be really long. Sorry, guys. Next. Start crafting. Oh, I shouldn't have exited. Vibrant. We have one vibrant. So I'm guessing those ones work. The only ones I'm having problems with so far is the fused and the dark steel. So I'll sort them out. I'll probably do something similar to what I have in this one and this is the last one I'm going to go over with you guys and then it will be the end of the episode so I have a trigger set up to a group we'll go into the group which is named Enderium and then I have a node running to a condition <clears throat> oh sorry guys the condition checks the chest to the down to see if there's an ender pearl, two ender pearls, two of these, which is the Enderium blend from Ender IO, because I'd rather make it this way than have to melt ender pearls down. Um, oops. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Um, items. Go back. Two ender pearls. Go back and one pyrothium, one pyrothium, and if it has all of this stuff and it's true, it's gonna take from the chest. So this one's targeting the chest again, and it's whitelisted all the same materials, all specified their proper amounts, and it's gonna output them to. You guessed it, the alloy furnaces or smelters um, up and empty blacklist. Now, if this is true and it doesn't have the enderium blend in order to make the enderium ingot, it's going to go to the false line, which the false line has its own group on it, which is a node to an input. And this was one that I had the most trouble with getting to run properly. I could not, for the life of me, get the silver, tin, and shiny ign ign oh. into one of these alloy smelters. It would come to this chest, but it would not go into the alloy smelter. So, this is why I have it set up this way. Because I had a condition here and all that fun stuff and it did not work for me. So I just ended up putting it straight in from the chest. Um, specified their amounts, but I put it on fuzzy detection. Because I have more than one ingot type of this. Um, same with the silver. 
specified amount one fuzzy detection the shiny egg oh i can't say that word right now ingot there we go <laughs> i'll just say it like that um specified one precision detection because there's only one type of shiny ingot so that's that and then yeah this is not needed because of reasons and there's some kind of weird bug with steve's back okay yeah sorry about that that was just a little crash something to do with deleting stuff out of this thing but for the most part i think we covered it like i said there's a little bug with this thing where when you delete something it'll like remove one of these you just gotta exit out and come back in and it'll come back up i'm not gonna try and make the bug happen again i am running an older version of this i haven't updated it yet i think i'm still on 1.1.1 of the dire wolf pack just because i'm waiting until i move my nodes just in case way of time has made it so that you can't move nodes with teleposers anymore i'm not sure if you still can or not so i figured i'd just wait everything seems to work all right in this pack just the odd little bug so but yeah in here we went over this right just basic input output for that let's craft up a quick little batch of that show you guys that I know it actually works because this is the one I tested the most. Um, as you guys can see, I have tons of Enderium and tons of Ender well, not tons of Enderium blend, but so if I click on this one and I say, "Hey, I want two ing ig oh, I can't say that word again. Oh my. Okay. Anyways, so all the stuff that we need, we have. Start crafting it we take a look one of these oh don't make a liar out of me please don't make a liar out of me this is the one that usually gets a yes so 41 percent that's going to take a minute but it is crafting it and it should craft it all the way into enderium um and i'll end up with two enderium base and two enderium so yeah there's two and two so that one works that one's one of the more important ones the dark steel and the fuse well the fused glass i need to get working because i do use a lot of fused glass so basically what i think i'm going to do is i'm just going to set it up similar to this one i'll run them on their own triggers and play around with them and see why they're not working properly but everything else in this program seems to be working all this stuff is simple so i don't see why it won't work and then basically if i do need to add something to this i can just come over here and either pop it into the interface manually um i got to add it to the whitelist what category am i under so like say i wanted to pulverize cobble into sand all i would do is i would come in here and i would go okay i need cobblestone and just add cobblestone and then whatchamacallit specify the amount to one which is easy you just click that and it specifies it to one and then it's there the other option is that i could come over here and put the pattern into this thing in me bob the interface terminal because i've got them all categorized now so i could just pop um sand into this one and then go over there and write the program after so i'm probably gonna leave a few of these terminals around the base i'm trying to decide where i want to put one in over here but it'll probably just be a crafting terminal and that'll probably be it it'll probably be like in this wall type thing so i can still access everything um coming up in i don't know what i want to do next episode i think i might want to 
do the farms. All these guys are spawning like mad. I went through and killed every one of them and they just started spawning like crazy again. So I think it's just going to be one of those things I got to deal with. So next episode we'll either work on the farms. Um, moving the Thomcraft base over I will probably do off camera. I got to build another platform because this one's going to be my Batania. So what I was thinking is over here doing like another cylinder type shape similar to this one over here and putting Thomcraft there and then over here doing a similar another one and doing blood magic over there. So that's kind of my plan for that. I just haven't got around to building it yet and I still have to go through and change all these blocks to decorative eventually too because I don't want this all being stone. Um, but with that guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up because this episode's probably like way over time now, especially with a couple little cuts and the crash there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did leave me a like helps me out a lot. Consider subscribing if you haven't already lets you know when I have new videos out and is free. Um, please favorite share. All that fun stuff with your friends. Um, what else? Yeah, I'm really tired. I gotta log off. Um, enjoy the rest of your guys' day. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video.